Hi, I'm Tova with Professor Pincushion, and today I'm going to be offering my tips for sewing with neoprene. Although typically used for wetsuits, neoprene is becoming a fashionable and popular fabric for garments. Its unique structure can create interesting looks, but it can sometimes be difficult to sew with. I'll be providing a few tips and tricks to make your first time sewing with neoprene smooth sailing. Let's go ahead and get started. Neoprene fabric is rubber sandwiched between polyester fabric. It comes in different thicknesses such as this one is 2.5 millimeters. Most home sewing machines can handle neoprene between 2 to 3 millimeters. Once you get to 4 millimeter or higher in thickness, you might need to use a heavy duty sewing machine. If the fabric is called neoprene but is thin, chances are you're using a scuba net and you want to check out our tutorial on Knit 101 for tips in working with that. Also make sure that you store neoprene rolled up on a roll like this instead of folded as folding it could cause permanent creases. When choosing garment styles, choose simple over complex. The fabric will have structure so you want to avoid excess bulk such as a pattern that has gathering. The fabric is flexible so that means it stretches and it can maintain shape. Realize this fabric isn't breathable so it can be very warm to wear. When cutting out your pattern pieces, lay your fabric flat so you're cutting everything out in a single layer. Then you can just lay your pattern on top and use your rotary cutter and mat to cut around the piece. Or if you don't have a rotary cutter, what you can do is use your fabric marker to draw an outline and then you can cut it out with your scissors. Now because we're cutting down on excess bulk, we're going to remove seam allowances. So wherever I have a seam, there's gonna be a seam allowance there and you can look at your pattern to see what it is. Typically it's 5 eighths of an inch. So I would make a copy of my pattern and let's say there's a seam here and here and just make it shorter whatever the seam allowance is. So the, the pattern that I make a copy of is gonna be minus seam allowance and hem allowance and all I'm gonna do is place that on top of it and draw an outline and then cut it out with my scissors. Instead of doing a typical seam, which is placing our pieces right side to right side and then doing a 5 8 seam, we're going to do something which is called an abutted seam. So this is why we remove seam allowance because if these two pieces need to be stitched together, I'm just going to place them side by side like this and then I'm going to sew a seam or a stitch that goes across the top of them that holds them like this. Now to hold them, I would not recommend using straight pins because once you put a hole into your fabric, it's going to stay there and it's not going to go away. What you can use is use clips like quilt binding clips to hold it together or if it's a really hard one that's really not staying together, you can put some fabric glue right on the side of it and then kind of hold them together like this so it makes it a lot easier. You can definitely use a straight stitch when sewing with neoprene, but if you're doing an abutted seam, you might want to do a zigzag stitch. Just make sure that you're choosing a slightly longer stitch, such as a 3 or a 3.5. Another stitch you can do is this one, which is a flat butted stitch, or you can also use a flat lock stitch. If you've never sewn with neoprene before, you'll definitely want to practice on some neoprene scraps. You want to find out what the correct tension is. In my particular case, I need to have a higher thread tension, so I have mine at an 8. You want to make sure you choose the correct needle. So you want something that's made for heavyweight fabric that's going to be size 100. So it can be a denim needle, it can be a leather needle. Also, I'm using polyester thread, and I'm using a walking foot. This is so the fabric feeds evenly as it's going through the sewing machine because you don't want to stretch the fabric as you're sewing it. When sewing with neoprene on your sewing machine, make sure to sew slowly. And you can see with my stitch, the stitch is catching both sides and bringing them together. Also, you probably don't want to do a back stitch. Instead, just take your tail ends here, put them in a loop, and tie your knot by hand. Garments made of neoprene can definitely have a zipper, but you probably want to do an exposed zipper. The nice thing is you don't have to place the zipper wherever you have a seam like most zippers in garments. Instead, you can place it wherever you want in your garment. You can just cut directly into the area where you want to have the zipper and neoprene doesn't unravel, so you don't have to worry about finishing any edges. 
So if I want to do a zipper like this, I measure the width of how much of the zipper I want to see exposed and the length of the zipper. Then I can draw a little rectangle, so I would be drawing the width of the zipper and then wherever the bottom of the zipper is and then I can just cut that box out, place the zipper underneath my box and again you probably want to use fabric glue to hold your zipper in place. And then you can see I just did a straight stitch all the way around the perimeter of the zipper, along the sides and along the bottom. Because our neoprene doesn't have to have finished raw edges, you don't have to worry about doing a normal hem, such as folding this over and then doing another stitch. You can just leave the raw edge exposed because it's not going to unravel. You just need to make sure that you cut your raw edges very neatly. Also, you may need to make some alterations if you're working with a commercial pattern, such as this waistband. Normally with most waistbands, the fabric is folded over, so it has a finished look on the inside of the waistband as well. So I just take my pattern, decide what I want my finished waistband width to be, and I create a new pattern from that. So then I just cut it out and just sew it to the top, and then I'm done with the waistband. You also don't need to worry about any interfacing or adding any lining as well. Now you definitely need to check out your care instructions when you buy your neoprene. I know with mine, I can't iron it with a hot iron. I need to use a low iron. So that's why you can't really try to get any creases in it because you're not gonna be able to get those out. Now, if you have your own tips in working with neoprene, definitely let us know in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to get notified of our weekly releases. Also check out professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 350 sewing tutorials. If you would like to directly support us, you can check out our Patreon campaign and earn some exclusive perks. Thanks for watching.